Hello everybody, Michelle Kunz here. The topic for today is tachycardias. Now, I've done a video on tachycardias before and I'm talking about patients who have a pulse and are symptomatic with tachycardias but as you might know there are new updates for 2010. The updates came out in October and November of 2010 and actually some of the algorithms in ACLS were downsized a little bit, making, maybe making it a little simpler to memorize. But I just wanted to review the tachycardias with you and how we are now to treat them. So tachycardias really can consist of a number of arrhythmias. So we know that tachycardia or sinus tachycardia is a rhythm that's over 100, but less than 150. Now we could normally treat sinus tachycardia as long as we found out the cause. What I'm really talking about is heart rates that are over 150. This can get a patient very symptomatic and become unstable very quickly where we have to urgently treat them. So I'd like to review some of those rhythms and some of the treatments. So some of the rhythms that can get very fast in your patients are rhythms like atrial fibrillation with as many irritable foci firing the atrium and firing, bombarding your AV node and ventricles with many beats. The AV node will block some of those beats, but still the rhythm can become very fast. And we'll show you a picture of that right now. Another rhythm, similar to atrial fibrillation, is atrial flutter. Now atrial flutter is one irritable foci firing in the atrium causing the baseline to have that sawtooth or pick and fence pattern. But again, the beats that can go down to the ventricle can become very, very rapid and your heart rate become very fast. And then there's also SVT. Now SVT really consists of any of those rhythms, AFib and A-flutter, and even on a rare occasion where the AV node fires as fast or over 150, we call all those rhythms SVT. So they're all grouped together in a title called SVT. Now how do we treat SVT? So when the patient becomes unstable due to their fast heart rate, in SVT, the team can have the patient do vagal maneuvers. If the patient's awake and can understand directions, they could bear down, they could cough, hold their breath. The practitioner can help the patient rub on their eyeballs. That might work. Some patients are sensitive to that vagal maneuver. Of course, the physician or NP or PA who has assessed the carotids can do a carotid massage. So any of these vagal maneuvers may be successful in breaking that rhythm. But now I'd like to go to the medication treatments that we'll find even in the ECC manual. So in the ECC manual, they break up the tachycardia page into SVTs and also into wide complex tachycardia, which could be an SVT on somebody who has a wide QRS, or it could even be VTAC. But for SVT, narrow QRSs, it's our favorite vagal maneuvers, and our old standby drug, adenosine. It works very well. It's very quick, short life, half life, it's six seconds. So when we give it, we always push it fast and flush it in. So you might remember the dose of adenosine initially is six milligrams IV push, fast and flush. Now we only give a second dose now of 12 milligrams. And that would be like in two minutes after the first dose. So we gave six milligrams of adenosine, then 12 milligrams of adenosine. Now if the patient really is unstable, we should be already have pads on the victim or patient's chest and do synchronized cardioversion, starting at 50 to 100 joules. Typically we might go for other drugs, but we're hoping that this, these two treatments, adenosine after vagal maneuvers, and a synchronized cardioversion, certainly with sedation first, will get our patient out of SVT. American Heart then recommends take another look at the QRSs. If we haven't gotten them out of SVT now, perhaps it is a wide QRS, and we might need to use an antirhythmic. The antirhythmics of choice are amiodarone 
And new to the list, back again, is procainamide. And another drug that's been added to the list, you'll see, is sodalol, which is a beta blocker. So this is a little different, but in VT, another tachycardia, which can patients become very unstable, and in VT, it's very wide QRSs. Sometimes the borders on the top of the bottom are uh, straight across, and sometimes, you know, they have twisting of points. So that VTAC is called Tersatz. So for VTAC, we use amiodarone, and for the patient with a pulse, it's 150 milligrams and 100 mLs over 10 minutes. And it is either amiodarone, which right now is very popular, or procainamide. So right now, the physician who's treating the patient will have to make a decision. Do they want to try that procainamide, if it's available in their code card, um, which is, um, you know, IV infusion very slow. It's 20 to 50 milligrams a minute. The maximum is the oddest number I know, 17 milligrams per kilogram, which may come out, you know, about 1,200 milligrams. So I'm thinking about giving this drug over a 20-minute period. But again, any tachycardia that's unstable, while we're giving medications, we're ready to do synchronized cardioversion. So let's just review that one more time. For narrow QRS complexes, tachycardia unstable, vagal maneuvers, adenosine 6 then 12 milligrams, push fast and flush, sedate and synchronized cardioversion. If that is not working, consider going over to the VTAC treatment which is amiodarone, 150 milligrams and 100 mLs over 10 minutes, synchronized cardioversion, increase your joules. You might even start with a higher amount of joules, 100, 120. You might need to go to 200. If amiodarone is not the drug of choice, it may be procainamide or even sodalol, which is 100 milligrams. So I hope that helps you with the review of tachycardias and one other thing they do mention if you have a rhythm that you think is VTAC because the QRS is wide if the antirhythmics don't work think about trying adenosine because maybe it is an SVT in a patient who has a wide QRS and we did mention the VTAC that has the borders that go like this torsade de pointe that drug would be magnesium in addition to all the treatments that we've been doing. So thank you for your time reviewing tachycardias with Ming. And we have a new newsletter um, on the internet, so you might want to sign up for that. And please send me any questions you have about this topic or any other topic in ACLS, PALS, BCLS, or nursing. Thank you.